since April the 27th, when Nigeria's President Mohamedou Buhari announced the plans to lift the lockdown, the country's COVID-19 case count has increased by nearly 50%. All right, uh, here in Lagos, commercial activities got up to a slow start as the government eased this lockdown over the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, goodness me, what I saw in the banks definitely was not a slow start. However, as the day progressed, a frenzy of public activities prevailed. Uh, Rice correspondent Neo Ilo was on the street of Lagos yesterday and he reports this. We'll take that and we'll come back and talk some more. A chaotic scene nonetheless prevailed in front of banks and other financial institutions as the conditional ease on previously imposed lockdown begins in Lagos. Various customers had to contend with long queues due to strict rules on the number of people allowed in. This development could be described as a litmus test to the much-touted social distancing which is virtually non-existent here and in other similar situations. Venturing further into retail and other commercial districts, the scenes are no better. The usual crowded scene, a hallmark of a bustling city like Lagos, slowly lived up to expectations. Other commercial districts showed increasing human and vehicular activities. The capital markets saw low public presence as stockbrokers and investors continued with remote trading via online platforms in the comfort of homes and offices with easing measures of getting business activities back on track going forward, there are expectations in the days to come. Actually, my expectation for this week, um, I think, I believe, I pray to Almighty Allah to make everything possible, especially for we that are doing small, small business like this. Because, and then, I really appreciate what the way government should do the lockdown, especially with the traders. So my expectation, especially this week, at least to see a little money for food so that we are can able to cater for my family and my relatives. Our expectation actually is that we can, we know we cannot recover what we have lost, but at least we can make something out of what we left behind. Humanitarian gestures were noticed as free meals were being given to traders in the region a development rarely seen in that part of Lagos. With commercial activities yet to peak in Lagos, the scenario is one of uncertainty with a partial curfew still in place. There are indications the development may prevail if current events are anything to go by. Ni Uilo, Arise News, Lagos. Well, the plan to ease the lockdown in Nigeria has been greeted by diverse reactions. While some Nigerians believe it is premature, others say a continued lockdown would only cause more economic havoc in the country. Now, in a trending video put up on social media by Hilda Dokuba, a Nigerian film legend and former special advisor on youth affairs to Peter Odili, a former governor of River State, she allays her fears concerning the easing of the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Let's take a listen to it. Who exactly is lying to the president? Who? The president has announced the easing of the lockdown on the strength of a lie. Who is lying to the president? We've been locked down now for five weeks. Prior to the lockdown, they made us a commitment of testing 1,500 persons every day. 1,500 persons times 14 days is 21,000. Times four weeks is 42,000. How then can the committee tell us that they have tested only slightly above 10,000? Today, we're close to 2,000 persons who have tested positive to the virus. If we use the strength of 10,000 total already tested and 2,000 already infected, that places us at 20% infection. Hmm. That's higher than every other country. 
Research findings are based on percentage. Who is lying to the president? Because on the strength of a lie, he has approved an ease and he has also approved an increase in the number of people to be tested daily to 2,500. If they could not accomplish 1,500, then how are they able to achieve 2,500 a day? The nurses and doctors and all health workers are working extremely hard, breaking themselves into pieces just to save lives. And a few people are sitting in the comfort of an air-conditioned room and reaching agreements that empowers only their pockets. Why make a mess of people's effort? Why? You know, sometimes when I sit down and I think of some of the things that people sit in committees and come up with, I wonder what runs in their veins, blood or water. Because they react like people who don't feel the pains of others. You have moved responsibility from yourself and you have hung it on the neck of the common masses. The same people that you are supposed to be protecting. During the lockdown, a lot of the poor were on the streets. Why? Because your palliative did not get to them. So they were out there struggling to see how they can feed off the food that you hold at them. So the palliatives didn't get there. No one is empowered to carry out research. So research isn't going on. Nothing is going on. And now you are throwing people back in the streets. A street that you haven't fumigated, you haven't cleaned up, but you have told us that this virus is airborne and can stay airborne for eight hours. I, I don't understand. It's, do you even assume that everyone is stupid? Let us take, for instance, Lagos State. With no traffic, during the lockdown, they could not trace people who had contact with those who had tested positive to the virus. They couldn't trace them. So imagine now, with traffic, how they will trace anyone. And if someone needs help deliberately, how will the NCDC get to the person? I don't understand. Do we want to end up like Ghana? who lifted their lockdown prematurely and ended up with all the casualties that they have. Can we handle that casualty? Someone is lying to the president and that person needs to stop. The president cannot be allowed to reach decisions on the strength of a lie. And Nigerians cannot live with this lie. Uh, joining us now is Hilda Dokubo. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, quite a pretty damning assessment of the approach uh, to uh, approach and response of the government to the coronavirus pandemic. But since that video, we have ramped up tests. We actually even conducted 2,070 tests on the 1st of May. Uh, but do you think we're doing anything right as regards the response to this pandemic so far? Yeah, I, I mean, we've already put in place um, instructions like um, everyone wear your mask if you're stepping out of the house, wear gloves just in case you pick up anything from any surface, um, take them away, throw them away. But, you know, it's not getting to the grassroots. We have communities everywhere, in every state, where people live in face me, I face you. That's what we call it, where people share restrooms, bathrooms, and all of that. Who is there? Who is reaching them? Those people are not on social media. Those people don't get those um, um, repeated text messages that you give. So we need to take the sensitization to the grassroots. And the best people to use for this are the councillors because they belong to those wards. Let's take this campaign to the wards, right? We're doing something. Um, if anyone says, begins to play down on the essence of clinical investigation, it simply means that that person does not understand anything about illnesses because no matter how small your symptoms are, whether they are of um, coronavirus or any other virus or bacteria, 
every qualified doctor will say, run a test, because he wants to be sure before he administers any kind of medication. So, yes, we're, we're doing something, the briefing people, um, you know, and, and, and that's it. But we can't go out to the streets. I, I'm hungry. My, my business is a contact business. I need to work. And the only way for me to work is to work with people. Okay, so now I'm doing one-man acts and training and building up myself. But that's not it. I need contact with human beings. So they need to make the environment at least fairly conducive. If, you, if, if, if the streets are swept and fumigated, then we can be sure that the threat of eight hours hanging in the air somewhere would be taken care of at least, you know, to an extent. And then the rest of it, you can take responsibility. I mean, that's the hashtag, right? Take responsibility. So are we doing something? Yes. But are we doing enough? No. Let's well, speak about towing the line of our economic reality and our public health, health reality. I mean, like you uh, rightfully said, uh, we've not even gotten, I've not gotten to our peak yet. And there, were, there was a push from the Nigerian people who had been locked in their homes for four weeks, forcing the government to, you know, put in place this partial, uh, this ease of this lockdown because they had to go out and make a living for themselves. But when you look at the videos that came out yesterday, a lot of Nigerians were not observing physical distancing. They were not wearing their masks. There was a, you know, the, on the BRTs, they had said they should be filled up to 60% capacity, but we saw Nigerians pushing to get on this bus. So do the people take any responsibility in this, in trying to make sure that they themselves help in flattening this curve? There are two sets of people out there, the ones who do not believe in the coronavirus and the ones who are ignorant of how it affects them as individuals. Now, the ones who do not believe just think that, and they don't believe because, you know, you're not showing them what this is like. Every picture of it that they have is of foreigners, not of Nigerians. The ones who are completely ignorant are the ones who haven't been told. No one, that's why I say we need grassroots sensitization if we want people to understand why it's important for them to uh, uh, observe social distancing. At least we know two things that can work. Social distancing can work. And if people wear their mask and, you know, observe proper hygiene, I mean, wash your hands, it's proper hygiene. There's no big deal about it. Maybe the only big deal now is that it has a pattern. It's um, 20 seconds. But people need to know, and people have been washing hands. I mean, I don't know any Nigerian who eats without washing hands. Okay, so maybe we, we went washing 15 uh, 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 minutes um, or every time or 20 seconds of washing hands, but there is not a single Nigerian who does not wash hands after using the bathroom or wash hands before they eat. So there are certain things that are common to us, but you see these two sets of people out there are the ones pushing, are the ones you see in the crowd, are the ones who are beating all the rules because they are both ignorant and uninformed. Right. Uh, I mean, there are many assertions you made about people that don't wash us. A lot of Nigerians don't wash us, even when they come out of the bathroom. I can tell you that for a, for a fact. Uh, you, you made two assertions. The first one, you said the local councillors should be in the vanguard of educating the people. We have about uh, over 8,800 words in this country. How many Nigerians know their councillors, to start with? So I, I'm going to challenge you on that. How many Nigerians know their councillors? Secondly, I'd like to explore that question you asked. It's a very important question. Who is lying to the president in all of this? Is it the people that said, you know what, ban interstate travel? Or the people that said, okay, ease the lockdown because of poverty and hunger and admit the fact that people can catch coronavirus even more? So who is lying to the president? I'd like to ask you that question. Two I, questions real quick. As I, I truly don't know. And that's why I'm asking the question, who is lying? about the people knowing their counselor, but their counselors know them, don't they? Didn't those counselors go to those grassroots to converse for votes during elections? Didn't they go there? Don't they go there? Isn't that supposed to be their constituency? 
So why would they go there now to talk to their people about staying alive? Why are they staying away from where they went to during elections? I don't know who is lying. If I knew who was lying, knowing me, I will call out that person straight. I don't know who is lying. If the president has the information the way it ought to be. Yes, I agree. Everyone is saying, hey, all die, not die. I mean, we have always said that. It's a Nigerian um, saying. We all say it. All die, not die. Okay, so if people are saying all oh, die, not die, if they understand why it's important not to die that kind of die, they will want to stay alive. People like to stay alive. They may be poor, but they are not crazy. Okay, so why won't these same people go to those grassroots? During the campaigns, we saw people travel around the whole place. Nigeria became small. They covered every state within a small period. Now we have a pandemic on our hands. Why can't the same people go? What is wrong with going? What is wrong with going to your people and telling them what to do to stay alive? I want it eased. That's the truth, because if it is, then I can go to work. I can earn a living. I, but my life is more important to me than any money. Whatever money I earn, I earn it myself. I work hard to earn that money. I don't steal it. So I need to work hard. I need the environment to be able to work and earn a mo my, my money. I need to be able to look after my family. So if I knew who was lying, I would call out that person and say, stop lying immediately. So let's not place it on people saying we want to go back. We all want to go back. Even you want to go back. You want to have your normal life back. Everything is removed from us because of something that no one planned for. It's here. It's here. That's the truth. But we have to learn to behave properly, take responsibility, and ensure that we all stay alive. The numbers increase. Did you notice? Yes. Did you notice? Yes. Okay, so do we want that to keep climbing? Uh, do we want to lose important okay. people to us? Do we want to lose families? Every Nigerian is family to me, and that's how I see it. I don't want to mourn over any family member. I do not want to mourn any family member. And mourning a Nigerian is mourning a family member. And I highly doubt that the numbers we saw yesterday are as... Uh are directly re, um, related to the behavior we saw yesterday. Perhaps we'll be seeing those numbers today. But Hilda, very quickly, um, whichever way you look at it, it's double jeopardy for Nigeria with the economy and the health uh, facility or infrastructure. When do you think it would be right to ease the lockdown? Because the numbers will increase. As soon as we ramp up the testing you're talking about, we would find more numbers. So when would it be right to ease the lockdown? Okay, I'll tell you a few things that they can put in place. I'm not in position to put them. And if those things are in place, we can go back now, right? <laughs> First is, please, let them clean up the streets, okay? Wash them, wash those public places that we all go to, the markets and all of that, and fumigate them, okay? That's one. Two, put in place a strategic points, of our states, our local governments, whatever, strategic points where people can have facilities to wash their hands. You do know that a lot of these um, smaller communities hardly have running taps and stuff. They can put those for them so people have running water because the instruction is wash your hands under running water, not in a bowl, okay? So they should put those things in place and then they should get um, things written and paste it. If you go around whatever hotels or public places, you see that cars packed at owner's risk. How about you put instructions like that in strategic places saying, mm. well, not touch this place because you fit carry corona. Uh -huh. yeah, let's put those things in place. We need to put things in place. Once we have those things to support Nigerians, I mean, you can open it yesterday, but we have to plan for people. If you put mats on the floor, in places like what we saw at the bank yesterday and people like there's a line that you must follow and you must stand in a particular spot and there are people there standing well dressed and kitted and um, you know protected themselves they can insist that people stand in those places but no one is taking responsibility that's the point so we need to have those things in place if those things are put in place those measures are put in place then they can open us up because we need to be Build but, 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 but a lot of people are going to say, hey, those measures I die me doesn't. Putting that in place does not account for a state like Lagos where you have about 2 million people with less than uh, how many square kilometers. It's a congested city. And, and, not, and not putting it in place is what? Will it change the personality of Lagos? 
Would it change well, the contact people have, the close contact people have? People need to see. Once upon a time in this country, mm -hmm. there was something called why, and people respected it. Okay, Hilda. because Hilda, yes. unfortunately, I know you're very passionate about this. It's a concern for everybody, but we have to go, and we do thank you for coming on the show today.